there's there's a line that that Drake said on his song, and and I know motherfuckers are gonna you know <laughs> quoted Drake, but and he probably got this line from someone else. I don't know where he got it from, but he said yesterday's home runs don't win today's games. Mm -hmm. so in in that in, in the spirit of that, you have to evolve and keep tightening up your game and doing different shit. You can't play the game you played in the past because the game will just fucking roll, you know, right by you like a fucking bolt of lightning. You know what I'm saying? And um, so I think you have to find a way to be you, stay current, and not go too far to the left of that's not you. You know what I mean? You could be out of the box, but not not something that like we've never as Cypress Hill, we've never followed any trends. Mm -hmm. We always try to do shit out of the box. So right. it's it's finding out, it's figuring out what out of the box is that is you right now. You know, and, and for us that's that's always just trying to evolve. So like for me, you know, I love the fucking nineties shit. I definitely listen to it when I DJ certain parties all fucking splash a heavy 90 set of hip hop. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, but you know, I, I try to be open minded and listen to everything, you know, and, and I mean everything. So, you know, if it's whack though, I'll fucking discard <laughs> that shit in a second. Yeah. You know what I want to talk about? You say everything. You had a group. I think from 2016 to 19 called Profits of Rage. It was you, Chuck D, and Rage Against the Machines, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, three guys of Rage Against the Machine, which was Tom Morello, Tim Comerford, and uh, Bradwell. Dope. Let's talk about Chuck D. We've seen recently, a couple weeks ago, prior to uh, Sanders getting released or, or leaving office or whatever the fuck that shit is, mm -hmm. uh, getting out of the, uh, the uh, Democratic race. You've seen that uh, Chuck D and Flavor Flav had a falling out. Can you talk about that and elaborate on that from the best of your knowledge? And how do you feel about that? Uh, well, you know, as a public enemy fan, you know, it, that's always like, uh, you know, you don't want to see the guys you you uh, were listening to and influenced by fucking quarrel for nothing. And in terms of, you know, uh, what they were going through, I don't know exactly what they were going through, but, you know, it 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 caused a minor rift for, for a half a second. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And fortunately, they were able to patch it up you know, whatever it was. Um, for me, working with Chuck, he's been one of my idols and, and he's one of the reasons why I do what I do, you know, in terms of hip hop. And, and uh, you know, so it was crazy. It was surreal to be able to be on stage with him and rock with him, you know, see, see you know, like be in the flavor role. <laughs> and yeah. Look over and see Chuck on the right side, like doing his thing. I mean, that, Growing up, you know, you can only dream that shit. And there I was in the middle of that dream with, you know, my good friends, you know, because these dudes are, you know, not only are, are they guys I respected, but they were my good friends, too. So um, it, it was a it was it was like magic, man. And, and the shows were fucking tremendous, you know. But, uh, yeah, it, 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 it was it was great doing that with those guys for that time. And, and uh you know, with with him and Flav, you know, they've known each other, you know, over 30 years. They, they're they like brothers, you know, and sometimes brothers have disagreements and in the end they patch it up. So, you know, I, I think that uh, I think they're doing something. Um, shit, I can't remember. I know that Chuck's got a new project out there and mm. they've come with one or something. I don't know. But I do know that, they, that they've... Uh, they've patched it up, which is good. Right. Definitely. How do you feel about, um, I don't know if you were a fan of Big Pun. Oh, yeah, man. I was a big fan of Big Pun, man. I got to tell you, like, there, there's, there's cats that come along and they influence you mm -hmm. to step your game up. Like, if you're a rapper that's been around, right, you know, you can never get complacent and think that what you're doing is the end-all, be-all. You always have to stay ahead, and you can only do that by listening to the best that do it. And to me, Pun, you know, he may not get the credit, but he was one of the best to do it because his flow was just immaculate. It was flawless. It was like water. You know what I mean? Like he had some of the best rhyme pockets with so many stuffed fucking syllables <laughs> with this yeah. rhyme, man. I mean, 
like I studied his style for sure. You know, that, that, that his style helped me evolve my style into, to, to something different, you know, because people saw me as, as a certain type of rapper until that shift and no shit, you know, and, and I thought that was a great question that you asked that because big pun was an influence in, in a, in a shift in my style. And uh, yeah, he, to me, he's one of the best whoever fucking did it right there. And I think the combination of him and Joe together was always dope because they pushed each other to be fucking dope. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's like a friend, like a brotherly competition, you know, and I had a chance to work with both of them as well as Cool G Rap. Oh. But uh, Cool G Rap, I don't think he, uh, he didn't come to the session. It was me, Joe, and, and, and uh, pun waiting on Cool G Rap <laughs> for a long fucking time. But what he did was amazing. I mean, he fucking killed it. But, you know, to be there watching, you know, Pun and Joe work, that was fucking awesome too. And, and I see how they, you know, they made each other better. And yeah. some of the records they did together were some of the dopest. But yeah, my man Pun. Man, deep his cover work. joint was crazy too. The deep cover joint. Oh, yeah. Sick, man. I, you know, I, his flow, so many people snatched that shit up. Mm -hmm. like, he influenced so many people. I mean, not just me. I'll tell you like that, that there were so many flows that were influenced by that particular fucking song right there. Mm -hmm. Classic, definitely. Well, can you run us through the time or, or run us through when you gave up the gang lifestyle to get into hip hop? You talk about the evolution of hip hop. Obviously, you had to evolve as a person to get into the game and then get to where you're at right now. Can you get us to walk us through that transition between well, before, you left that lifestyle to going to hip hop? Yeah, beforehand, I was really stubborn. You know, Sand Dog and, and his brother Mello had come to me a couple times and Muggs. Um, and I'd just be like, ah. I'm right here in the hood. We ain't going to make no money on you no know, hip hop music that, you know, that's, that's where I was at the time. I was like really closed off and I, you know, I was in it like for real. I, I don't try to brag about that shit. You'd never hear me glorify those days or any of that mm -hmm. because I, I know the negativity that was in it. You know, I got my experiences from it and I would not change it because it molded me to, to who I am from what I seen and the, the problems that a lot of us caused from what we were doing. So I'm never in a position to glorify it ever, you know? So um, that's, that's one off top, right? But yeah, I was fucking in it and I was stubborn and I didn't, you know, I didn't really give a fuck to, to rap. I mean, I was rapping before I got into to the banging with those guys. I was very young. I was always the young buck in the squad. But I forgot all about that. I was like, you know what? I'm over here. I'm banging. I ain't got time for this rap shit. And um, I don't. I can't remember exactly how they convinced me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember how they convinced me. But they were like, "Hey man, why don't you just come write a song? Mellow's working on this album, and we need you to write a song." Because I was always, you know, at that time I wasn't necessarily rapping that great, but my 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 pen work was was good. You know what I mean? And they were like. Let's go get him to write a song. They were trying to get me off the street and into the music, you know, and I wasn't seeing it. And then finally I was like, all right, fuck, what do I got to lose? I'll go with them and write a couple of songs. If it doesn't work, I'll fucking come back over here and I'll be slanging and banging again, right? And, um, mm -hmm. When I wrote the first song with them, um, it was on his, uh, it was either the, the album that went to Delicious Vinyl or, or Capital. I wrote a song, I think, called River Cubanos, right? And uh, and I co-wrote some other shit with him on it. But I, I got the bug to write again and, and because I heard the way he sounded, you know, to the words that I had written for him. And uh, and I thought, fuck, that's cool. You know, maybe I could I could write some shit for motherfuckers. I, you know, at the time, I didn't think to do it for myself. I just thought, you know what, maybe I could write for other people, right? And uh, that was like the bug that got me back into to rapping right there as I was banging. It took me a minute to get out of the banging, you know, just because I was a soldier at the time, you know, like I, I was in, I, again, I was deep in it and I was down for my homeboys and down for the hood. But like when I started record, when we started recording our shit, our first demos where they were actually serious and 
I, I heard the potential in what we were going to do later um, as uh, Sandog Mug.